How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems for 20.1 redox reactions where we're going to determine the oxidation number of various atoms in a compound and identify what has been oxidized or reduced in a chemical reaction and also identify oxidizing and reducing agents. So you can see an example kind of there, but let's let's get into it. What is the oxidation number for sulfur in HSO4 minus? So if we have an ion, we know that the oxidation numbers all have to add up to be equal to the overall charge. So I know that whatever hydrogen is, plus whatever sulfur is, plus whatever four oxygens are, has to equal minus one. All right, so we'll, we're gonna start with oxygen. Oxygen's always gonna be minus two. All right, so if we got four of them, I have a minus eight from all those oxygens. Hydrogen, since it's written first, is telling you that, hey, this is the positive thing. So if I have one hydrogen, that's a plus one. And now sulfur, well, what's sulfur gotta be to give me a minus one overall? Let's see, I got plus one, I got minus eight. Sulfur is gonna have to be a positive six. So that's one way to do it. I usually, for the sake of space, will go, hey, oxygen, you know what, I'm gonna change my pen color just so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Oxygen's got minus two each. There's four of them, so I'd say, hey, that's minus eight. Hydrogen is plus one, and I know that the whole thing has to equal minus one, and that's how I'm usually doing it. I'm just doing this charge times how many there are, giving me the overall charge. So what's missing? Sulfur has gotta be six. If this was like S2, then I would go backwards. I know I need a positive six from two of them and then I'd end up with a plus three for sulfur. But that's not what we got going on, all right? Number two, which element is oxidized in the reaction below? So a little mnemonic to remember, oil rig. What's it stand for? Oxidation is losing electrons. So the charge is gonna go up because electrons have a negative charge. Whereas reduction, is gaining electrons and the charge goes down because electrons have a negative charge. So we gotta go through and we gotta figure out uh, what the oxidation numbers are for each of these elements in the compound. So I minus, they tell you right now, hey, easy, it's minus one. MnO4 minus, we're gonna have to figure out. All right, well, I know oxygen, since it's in group 16, it's gonna have that minus two charge. And oxygen's like old reliable. It's always gonna have that like minus two when it's in a compound. Uh, most of the time, right? So there's four of them, so I get a minus eight. So MN and a minus eight has to give me a minus one. So MN must be seven. There's one of them, so MN has a charge of plus seven. Hydrogen, they tell you it's minus, or plus one right there. I2, if it's an element just by itself, even if it's a uh, diatomic, molecule it's still just iodine and the way i remember that is like hey you're all by yourself you're a loser that's a zero you have a zero oxidation number it's a little harsh but that's how i remember it all right since mno2 has no charge shown over here that that tells us that the whole thing has to equal zero so i know that i got oxygens there's a minus two on each of them and there's two of them so i have a minus four from all those oxygens if the whole thing has to equal zero there must be a plus four and where is that coming from the one MN, so that MN has a plus four. Now H2O, all right, oxygen, old reliable, minus two, and that tells me that, hey, if the whole thing has to equal zero, there must be a plus two, and where's it coming from? The two hydrogens, so each hydrogen is plus one. So what element is oxidized? We're looking for the oxidation number to go up. So which one of these went up? Well, let's see, iodine went from minus one to zero that's that looks good so i minus one went up let's check the rest of them though mn went from a plus seven to a plus four well that got reduced the charge went down it became more negative or less positive oxygen stayed at minus two and hydrogen stayed at plus one so the thing they got oxidized is going to be this i minus one all right, three, which of the following reactions is a redox reaction? So redox is short for reduction and oxidation, which means we have changes in charge, right? We have electrons being transferred. How is that possible? Well, one is losing electrons, the other is gaining. So one thing is going to be reduced when they gain the electrons, one thing is going to be oxidized by losing them. So we gotta look at, again, the oxidation numbers. 
So I got AGNO3 and I got HNO3 on the other side. Hmm, interesting. This looks like a double replacement reaction. And generally speaking, double replacement reactions are not redox reactions. And if you take a look, you can go, hey, oxygen each has a minus two. Uh, I know NO3 is going to have a minus one charge. So if there's a minus six from those, nitrogen's got to be a positive five, which means silver is a positive one. And then that is true on this side as well. Nothing has changed. Uh, and if I take a look at hydrogen chlorine, chlorine's gonna have a minus one, hydrogen's gonna be a plus one, and that is still the same on the other side as well. So we don't have any changes in charges. So that can't be a redox reaction. All right, if I take a look at PB plus two, plus two Cl minus, arrow PBCl2, same thing as the first one. Hey, chloride is still a minus one charge. The PB is still a plus two charge. This is not a redox reaction. All right, if we take a look at C, NaOH plus HCl gives me NaCl and H2O. It's, a, it's gonna be the same thing. Hydrogen here is plus one, oxygen's minus two, sodium's gonna be plus one. Hydrogen here, plus one, chloride, minus one, and it's the same thing on the other side. Nothing has changed oxidation numbers. So boom, answer's gonna be D, none of the above is a redox reaction none of the above are i don't know i'm a science teacher not an English teacher okay four what is the oxidizing agent so remember agents cause whatever's happening so an oxidizing agent is causing oxidation which means what happens to the oxidizing agent it gets reduced right think of a towel a towel is a drying agent you have something that's wet, you need a drying agent to dry it up. You bring in a towel, the towel does the drying. What happens to the towel? The towel gets wet. So if we're looking for the oxidizing agent, we're looking for the thing that gets reduced. So we're gonna have to look at the oxidation numbers. All right, so Cr2O7 has a minus two charge. Each oxygen is minus two. There's seven of them, so that gives me a minus 14, which means if I have a minus two overall, there must be a plus 12. And where's that plus 12 coming from? The two CR. So each CR is a plus six. All right, I got S2O3 minus two. So same process. I'm going to erase this to give myself some room. Y'all are experts in that now. Anyway, so oxygens minus two each. There's three of them. So I have a minus six. If the whole thing is minus two, there must be a plus four charge from the sulfurs. Well, since there's two of them, each is a plus two. Hydrogens, they tell you right off the bat, it's plus one. All right, and if I'm looking over here, uh, CR plus three, they gave me the charge, nothing to figure out there. S4O6, well, each oxygen is minus two. There's six of them, so I have a minus 12 from that. If the whole thing has to equal minus two. There must be a plus 10, which means, hey, this is weird, huh? On average, the sulfurs are gonna be 2.5. What's weird about that is like you can't have a half charge, but what it is is some of these are going to be three, some of them are going to be two. And then I have H2O. Oxygen's minus two, each of the hydrogens are plus one. So what is the oxidizing agent below? What gets reduced? Well, let's see. Cr2O7 goes from a plus six down to a plus three. So that is what's getting reduced which means it is causing oxidation. How is this able to get reduced? Well, it's gaining electrons. It's forcing something to lose its electrons. It's causing oxidation. All right, number five, what is the reducing agent below? And hey, this problem looks awfully familiar, huh? It's the same problem. So I'm gonna answer this one just on the same screen. Uh, so this one is the ox agent. Then which thing is the reducing agent? Well, what is getting oxidized? Well, let's take a look. Um, well, hydrogen's not changing at all, so it can't be that. It must be this S2O3 minus two. Some of those sulfurs are getting oxidized. They went from a plus two to a plus three, right? Probably only two of them. Two of them stayed the same. That's how you end up with a two and a half as the average oxidation number. All right, number six. What is the oxidation number for chromium in the Cr2O7 minus two ion? So again, Cr2O7 with a minus two charge. I know each oxygen is minus two, there's seven of them, so I have a minus 14 from all those oxygens. 
Overall, I need a minus two, so there must be a plus 12 from the two CR. So if I have plus 12 from two of them, each of them have an oxidation number of plus six. So plus six is my oxidation number. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.